I just wanted to share with you this little clip of Jonathan Haidt giving a lecture back in 2016. He's talking about social justice, equity and truth. And he's arguing that universities can either be advocates for social justice or advocates for the truth, but they can't do both because one of them is going to compromise the other. And I think this talk is really relevant in today's culture where people are feeling victimized, they're feeling slighted at minor offenses. Um, we have uh, just crazy things going on around the world like the, um, uh, the banana peel incident, <laughs> the Google manifesto. Uh, we have people being fired from their jobs for expressing uh, what are really mainstream opinions but they don't fit the political agenda of the, the company that they're working for. Uh, we see equity programs being put in place all around the world and uh, we're living in an increasingly hysterical society. So I just think that this clip is uh, incredibly, incredibly relevant for today and uh, Jonathan Haidt really artic it articulates the point uh, very well and goes through and describes what victimization culture is, how we got here and what we can do about it. And uh, I really like the way he talks. He's a little bit more softly spoken than Jordan Peterson and uh, seems to, um, yeah, be a little bit softer uh, on, on the other side, uh, but he still speaks the truth in a very powerful way. So hopefully you guys enjoy it. I will be back for an update. I'm still going through the self-authoring program and I have been uh, procrastinating with doing a, an update uh, on that uh, for a few weeks, but uh, I'll definitely be back and probably uh, have another update uh, regarding that, uh, my progress through that program uh, on the weekend. But for now, enjoy Jonathan Haidt. What uh, uh, Manning and Campbell say has been happening, especially, and it, it, the, it happens first on campuses in the United States, is the transition to a victimhood culture. A culture of victimhood is one characterized by concern with status and sensitivity to slight, so just like an honor culture. Any little thing can, can cause it, you, you have to react. So people are intolerant of insults, even if unintentional, as in an honor culture. At, but here, they react differently. They don't deal with it themselves. They bring it to the attention of the authorities. If something happens, you don't deal with it yourself. You report it, you get the president of the university, the dean, somebody, some older person, some bureaucratic authority, you bring them in to punish the person who did this. Um, in such a culture, you don't emphasize your strength, rather the aggrieved emphasize their oppression and their social marginalization. They also point out that the only way to gain status is not just to be a victim, but to stand up for other victims. And so even if you're not in a victim class, you can gain status by aggressively pursuing those who you think have marginalized members of the victim class. So for example, um, at Emory back in, uh, I think, January, February, when somebody wrote Trump 2016, not just once, but maybe 20 or 30 times, People wrote Trump on campus overnight. What do you think happened? Do you think those tough Emory students got out their wet sponges and paper towels and erased it? Hell no. They were scared. They were panicked. They said they were fearing for their lives. And they, and they went en masse. They gathered and then they went to the president and they demanded that the president of the university take action. Can you imagine someone writing that during an election year? So this is moral dependency. The president at first was very sympathetic, and then when the whole world mocked him, he kind of backed off and said, you know, okay, we have to, you know, let people have free speech. But, you know, it, so, so the British tabloid, the Daily Mail, students freak out because someone chalked, chalked Trump slogans. Um, so the whole world is laughing at Emory University, and basically they're laughing at American college students. Uh, and this is not just the whole world, it's most of America, too, is laughing at the stories they read about fragile college students. Not you guys. You guys, I'm sure, are tougher. You came to this lecture. Many of you are in the PPE program. I don't mean you, but all the students at many other schools. Um, and the reason why this is so terrible for the students themselves is that once victimhood culture gets onto your campus and once it gets into the teaching, students are literally, literally taught to see people as members of good or bad groups. There is the good race and the bad race, the good gender and the bad gender, good, bad. Students are learning a Manichaean view of the world good versus evil. This means that there is eternal conflict and grievance. There can never be peace in a victimhood culture. There is eternal conflict and grievance because that's what the struggle for status is all about. 
students are walking on eggshells. In a victimhood culture, everyone is afraid. Everyone is self-censoring. Um, and that's what leads them to implement or to demand safety culture. The whole idea, the very idea, that a college campus is full of danger. These are unbelievably safe places. Um, but the idea that words, ideas, and speakers could invalidate someone's existence is so threatening. We need protections. We need safe spaces. We need trigger warnings. <clears throat> the net effect is that the very people you're trying to help are rendered weaker and they become moral dependents. They become morally dependent.